Hello everyone, and uh, on this Feast of the Sacred Heart, a big welcome from the Church of the Sacred Heart. We uh, are not having a full high mass, as you can see, it's the community there, and we wanted to let you in a little bit to see uh, how we celebrate mass as a community. Uh, at our community masses here, the Jesuit community has been praying for you and with you, and we wanted you to be a part of this celebration of Mass as we celebrate our paternal feast day. Let me invite you to join in the responses at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Dear friends, we come together to celebrate the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. And so we call upon that infinite love as we acknowledge our need for mercy. You are sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, and O God, Almighty Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, our only begotten Son, Lord God, the Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the first child of Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that fount of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We listen now to the scripture readings appointed for this feast. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people consecrated to the Lord your God. It is you that the Lord our God has chosen to be his very own people out of all the peoples on the earth. If the Lord had set his heart on you and chose you, it was not because you outnumbered other peoples. You were the least of all peoples. It was for love of you and to keep the oath he swore to your fathers that the Lord brought you out with his mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, Know then that the Lord your God is God indeed, the faithful God, who is true to his covenant, and his graciousness for a thousand generations towards those who love him and keep his commandments, but who punishes in their own persons those that hate him. He makes him work out his punishment in person. You are therefore to keep and observe the commandments and statutes and ordinances that I lay down for you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold him in fear. The, the love, love of the Lord, Lord is everlasting upon those who hold him in fear. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. All my being, bless his holy name. My soul, give thanks to the Lord, and never forget all his blessings. The love of the Lord is everlasting, and the Father is holy in fear. 
It is He who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold Him in fear. The Lord does deeds of justice, gives judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses and His deeds to Israel's sons. The love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold Him in fear. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold Him in fear. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world His only Son, so that we could have life through Him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when He sent His Son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and His love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in Him and He is living in us because He lets us share His Spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent His Son as Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in Him and He in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love, and anyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. We miss you. All of us here think of you every day, and we speak of you, and we speak well of you, 
and we miss you. We pray for you and we hope uh, that you can pray for us. This is our community. We live as one family under one roof. We look after each other's needs. We try our best to show the love we've just heard about, the essence of our faith. One thing that this emergency has um, made possible for us as, as a church is to see what is essential. And the same in our normal lives as well, that become so suddenly abnormal. We focus on the essentials. And I'm sure that for most of us, that comes down to relationships. The people we are living with, if we are sharing our life at this time with others, the people who are in our life in any way that they can be at this time, our relationships with those who matter to us and to whom we matter, but also to our relationship with God. Frequently, people ask, why is this happening? Is this a punishment? We've heard in the Old Testament that the people of God were very aware that sometimes they experience what they would see as just punishment for their sins. We see things a little differently. We would say that in every circumstance of life that comes to us, we are invited to find God, to find God in all things, to know uh, His will for us, the will of God which comes from within us, radiates out as we rise to the occasion around us. Above all, as we meet the needs of those around us, we meet those needs in love. This is the only way to show that love. How else could we show love, or even that we cared about someone, unless they needed us in some way? Well, the Sacred Heart is a symbol of love, but it's more than, than we might imagine. It didn't just come in with the uh, promotion of the Sacred Heart as a, a devotion uh, promoted in large measure by the Jesuits over the centuries, but it goes back even before then to the Passion of Christ. It's a devotion essentially directed to the Passion of Christ, to the wounds of Christ, and above all, the image of the wounded heart, wounded by a spear, a soldier's spear, an instrument of death and hostility. Christ receives these wounds, and through them we are healed, and we ask for that healing as we consider those wounds that he still bears in his glorious and risen body. The wounds of Christ are the wounds of his church. And the heart of Christ is a heart that expresses pain and love and compassion. And those three things I invite you to carry with you from this celebration of Mass. Pain, we know it. Separated as we are from the fellowship of our church and parish life and from the sacramental life which nourishes us. Pain, but love which unites us and overcomes the pain as we know we will be together again physically before too long and that we will be able again to draw life from that living fountain that pours from his wounded side, the blood and water. Compassion, because his compassion must help us to be compassionate. To be compassionate. If we are not more compassionate after lockdown, then what have we learned from this? If we are not more loving, and if we are not a stronger church, community. So let us ask that simple question then. What is God saying to us? saying to me in this time of pain, this time of love, this time of compassion.
May this be a time not of trial or tribulation, but of grace and consolation. Amen. On this solemnity now, we profess our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our prayers now before the Lord on uh, our behalf, on behalf of the Church and the world. We pray for the parish community of Sacred Heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering in any particular way at this time and perhaps feeling that pain more than ever, we pray for them, that God may be with them and console them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If you'd like to add any thoughts or prayers, please. We've come to the end of Refugee Week remembering people who will be experiencing the anxiety and insecurity, not just for a time as we may have experienced it in these three months, but continuing to experience it in their lives. So let's pray for the grace to recognize the pain that they endure and to ask God for the grace to show them something of the love and compassion of which Father William was speaking. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. I was sitting in my office this afternoon and the doorbell went, and something unusual now. And I went out and there was a lady suitably distant. It said I was passing by the closed church and I just wanted somebody to say a special prayer. So I said, we'll remember you this evening. So uh, for her and all those with uh, wanting special prayers, then let's remember her and everybody else. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Different protests around the world have brought to the fore the suffering of many groups of people, people who are oppressed. And so let us remember these different groups of people in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those thousands of people, many thousands of people, who have shown the compassion and love of Christ in the way they have cared for others during this corona crisis. All those who look after uh, difficult families, uh, difficult members of their families, those who are sick, those who are special with needing special emergencies, and those who have looked after their neighbour in particular, other people down the road, those who are actually worried about them and looked after them during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our sick and housebound, especially those in nursing homes who feel perhaps this lockdown period even more acutely than normal. 
Pray that the love of the Lord, the Lord Jesus, expressed through the Sacred Heart, will be felt by them in their loneliness and in their confinement, in their rooms, their houses, their nursing homes. Lord, hear us. Lord, it's gracious to hear us. Let us pray for our dearly departed, all those who have passed away, especially during this difficult period, that they may be welcomed home by God and into His eternal home. For them and for their families, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let me add, uh, Margaret Miller's name to that. She had a great devotion to Sacred Hearts and um, uh, this is a very special day um, as we say farewell to her. She was a member of the parish for over 50 years. For the repose of her soul we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Savior, as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father in heaven, hear the prayers we make to you. We pray with confidence, because we pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God of <clears throat> By the mixture of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Christ, who humbled himself to share our human life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of your name, for our good and good hearts of this Look, O Lord, we pray, on the surpassing love in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the Church's sacraments, 
so that, won over to the open heart of the Saviour, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we have prayed. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leo, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, the Holy Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of your Son, and Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share a sign of peace with one another at home and here in the sanctuary. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and grant us peace. We come now to Holy Communion. And we are very aware of the pain that many suffer, so many, from not being able to receive the sacrament physically. And so united in spirit, we ask the Lord Jesus to come into our hearts once again, to transform our lives and to fill us with his love and grace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, Let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow from within the one who believes.
Let us pray. May this sacrament of love, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in one another, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless us and keep us safe, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now on behalf of the community, oh, we wish you every blessing for the feast. Happy feast day, everyone. Stay well. God bless you.